Well, let's cross now to our correspondent in Kabul, Bilal Sawari. Uh, Bilal, we've just heard moments ago that the government in Farah has now surrendered uh, to the Taliban. What more do we know about that? The provincial governor, Masoud Bakhtawar, uh, who is from the Nuzai tribe, did surrender to the Taliban inside the Afghan National Army's brigade, one of the very last uh, centers uh, that put a stiff resistance. Uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday, the governor's office that was captured by the Taliban did change hands a few times. Now, his father was uh, also someone who surrendered to the Taliban uh, earlier this year when the son was then deputy governor. So the dynamics on the ground are, are changing very rapidly. We also know that in the province of Ghazni, a strategic province that is between Kabul and Kandahar Highway, uh, is where Taliban have managed to take over the present parts of the uh, police headquarters as well as key police stations. And according to the provincial council chief, uh, Fakiri, who I spoke to, he said that uh, the Afghan uh, Air Force has to carry strikes against big number of uh, Taliban gatherings or else the province uh, may collapse. In the last few minutes, we have, uh, have had other accounts suggesting that most of the province indeed has fallen with the Taliban freeing the prisoners. And now we see this uh, as part of a Taliban strategy, a very concerted effort on their part, going for major provincial capitals, uh, urban centers, and more importantly, targeting the presence, the provincial presence, where Taliban fighters and leaders and commanders are held. So they're also sending a very clear message to their fighters and villages and districts and cities that we will never leave you behind. And I think that's an important uh, Taliban recruitment strategy as well. And as you've been saying, it seems that not a day is going by without a new series of gains for the Taliban. What are the main challenges here for the Afghan security forces and why do they appear to be crumbling so fast? I think the Afghan reasons are the political uh, divisions in Kabul, uh, the disconnect between leadership and uh, battlefield commanders, uh, you know, the issue of corruption, um, food not being there for like over years, fatigue. A lot of these soldiers and commanders uh, are struggling with low morale. They've not had rotations. And more importantly, when the Americans announced that they were withdrawing militarily in the month of May, that also meant that there would be a, a clear decrease in airstrikes and all the logistical support. And the Americans would drop food and water and evacuate the wounded. I think on the ground at a village, district, provincial level, most people did take insurance with the Taliban by making behind the scene deals. And the Taliban also said to people, uh, important people, not only in the military, they said, if you don't fight with us, if you don't put a fight, we're not gonna bother you, you know, we're gonna let you live, we're gonna like give you a letter of guarantee. And I think it's those dynamics as well that continues to play, uh, you know, an important role in this uh, destructive trend continues for the Afghan National Security Forces, for the Afghan government, only yesterday, the president fired the army chief of staff, replacing him with one of the youngest generals that the country has. Uh, he also promoted the core commander, another younger general in his 30s, to be the overall special forces commander. So you see a generational shift now. Uh, generals in their 30s inheriting this war, which is now 40 years, you know, or at least the last 20 years since the Americans have been here when they toppled the Taliban after the 9-11 attacks in 2001.